All right, how many sets do you need to failure? Let's get into this topic. First is, is one set all you need? There's a bunch of data now coming out that shows that one set to failure is plenty adequate for growth, the same as four sets of, you know, eight to 12 reps in reserve. But can we get more on certain body parts or can we get more in general out of doing numerous sets to failure? How many sets to failure is the best way of going about it? Um, we have Dorian Yates, Mike Mensa, a whole host of new age, high intensity advocates, including myself, who often say that you only need one set and that's it. But I think there is more to it than just one set, perhaps. It's contextual. So let's go into the next thing, which is, yeah, maybe are you a genetic beast are you beastly like that are you a freak the two biggest proponents or two biggest you know uh, advocates of high intensity we've ever had have been genetic freaks on a shit ton of steroids now that doesn't take away from high intensity training it's demonstrable that high intensity works for genetically inferiors genetically uh you know people that haven't got the best genetics average genetics bad genetics good genetics it is obvious that it works for naturals too, but there are certain aspects to not being a genetic beast that can then come into why maybe you need a little bit more than just one set. Um, you know, Dorian Yates, not the best example of someone as to what works and what doesn't work. Dorian Yates can look at a weight and his fucking calves and traps and everything will grow. But that doesn't take into consideration someone who might need a little bit more stimulus to get growth out of their training, maybe a bit more frequency, maybe a bit more time and attention, a bit more muscular damage, a bit more of a reason to make an adaptation, which is the next point, which is calves, traps, and stubborn areas. Let's say you are genetically gifted or you have average genetics. That doesn't to say that you won't have areas that are genetically inferior, right? Dorian Yates, Mike Mensa, they literally didn't have any genetic weaknesses, but most of us have some somewhat genetic strengths, somewhat genetic averages, and somewhat genetic disadvantages. In my case, I have incredibly shitty genetics for calves, hamstrings, traps, and chest. But then my arms are decently genetically gifted. My shoulders are average. My back is average, and everything else is just generally quite average. So training has to fluctuate relative to this. And then when it comes to muscles like calves and traps, they're so weight bearing. We have spent hundreds of thousands of years walking around our calves. They need a little bit more stimulus on average than say a bicep, where for hundreds of thousands of years, we weren't walking around on our bicep. So the biceps don't need as much stimulus uh, to grow. But, and then the traps, the traps can take hell of a lot of weight. You can put hundreds of kilos on a bar, lift it up, and your traps can take that weight without tearing a bicep. Your bicep, some dude pulls down on it with maybe a hundred kilos of weight and it fucking pops off the bone because it's not very weight bearing. It doesn't take much damage. So calves, if you are genetically disadvantaged like I am, and they are calves, so they take more stimulus, you might need two or three sets to failure before you adequately make an adaptation response, before you've broken down enough fibers from this incredibly uh, durable muscle, same with traps. It might even be that your back is like that. It might be a stubborn area in your back. Your back might have, your, mac, your back might be a stubborn area. You might not have a good mind-muscle connection. You might have a hard time activating every single fiber. Maybe when you train pull-ups, your biceps and forearms get heavily involved and thus you're not able to actually fail with the back, you fail with the arms. So you might need more sets to be on failure. You might need more force reps, more drop sets, more rest pauses beyond failure to actually adequately stimulate the lats when your biceps are taking over or they're just really durable. Maybe your back can just take more workload than the average person. Maybe you recover quicker than the average person and thus you can train more frequently or train with more sets beyond failure and make more adaptations. So that's the next thing to think about is, you know, Dorian Yates naturally at 60 years old to this day has 19 inch calves. He doesn't even train them. So yes, of course, it's very easy for a Dorian Yates to say, all you need is one set of calves to, to failure to grow your calves, but that's just not gonna cut it when you don't have those genetics. Next is a simple concept of overkill versus underkill. 
there is so much conflicting research on how many reps and sets you need beyond failure or to failure or how many sets you need with reps in reserve to make you know adequate adaptations and because of that confliction we don't exactly 100 percent know exactly how much you need and everyone is individual as i just mentioned so how much do you need exactly if we're going based off the studies it can be very difficult to tell i would much prefer overkill than underkill let's say you just do one set of failure for back and for six months you do this you waste six months because you just did one set of failure and that was it and that wasn't quite adequate for you it will be very obvious when something is adequate for my personal experience one set to mechanical failure on delts was perfect it was actually the opposite where more volume was uh detrimental whereas numerous sets of calves in the last month has been very beneficial it's been very obvious my calves grew half an inch after basically months of not growing at all once i just decided to do two to three sets to failure rather than just the one and you'll intrinsically feel it Lately, I've been doing way, way more drop sets after my initial set for back, and I get a way better pump. I can feel the muscles really annihilated, whereas before I could feel a lot more bicep and forearms, not as much back because my mind-muscle connection is as, as good. So rather than just doing one set to failure on calves, one set to failure on back, or in back's case, I do one set to failure, but with numerous drop sets, which we'll get into in a second, I just overkill it. I go to failure and then beyond. I do a bunch of rest pauses, force reps, drop sets, and in Carve's case, numerous sets. And this way, I'm guaranteed to make an adaptative response, whereas one set on certain body parts might not quite hit that threshold. I might need a little bit more. On the delts, by all means, I can fundamentally underkill by just doing one set because I'm making obvious gains. But if you're not making gains, or you're not making tremendous gains, because with high intensity, you should be making tremendous gains, might be time to add a little bit more work beyond failure. And it's just psychologically reassuring at the end of the day when you just feel like you've definitely crushed that, that workout. That was one of the biggest issues I had with volume is I would all the time finish my workouts and just be like, nah, I don't think that quite cut it. And if you feel like it didn't quite cut it, there's a good chance it didn't quite cut it. And also the placebo effect's real. If you don't believe in what you're doing, there very well could be less effect from puck and ill. From your workout the mind is the ruler of the body next is lack of options in my case for the longest time i didn't have very many options as far as legs go i still don't have that many options as far as leg training goes ideally i would have a leg extension for the inner quad and then a hack squat machine for my outer quads and just overall log leg development i would use a uh leg extension machine to pre-exhaust my quadriceps so that when I did the hack squat, my glutes and hamstrings didn't take any of the stimulus to, I could isolate my glutes far more, but I don't. So rather than doing one set of hack squats to hit my quads, where a bunch of other muscles are also activated and potentially failing before my quads, I do two to three sets with a bunch of drop sets and rest pauses just to make sure that my quads are actually totally annihilated. Tom Platts, the godfather of quadriceps and legs and everything legs, used to train his legs numerous sets to failure. He would do four sets of squats, four sets of leg press, four sets of all kinds of leg exercises to failure and beyond. And then he would overcompensate by resting way longer. In my case, I don't wanna rest two or three weeks between leg days. I just decide I'll just do a little bit more and take the overkill approach to make sure every single fiber is stimulated in, this, in the case of not having many pieces of equipment for my legs. On contrast, I have plenty of equipment I can use for my back, my biceps, my delts, and thus, when I'm trying to hit my upper pecs, I only need one set, maybe some sets beyond failure just to really nail it home. But I don't need numerous sets to try and get every fiber hit because I have a means to isolate my upper pecs. I have a means to isolate my inner and outer head of my triceps. My quads, I don't. I don't have necessarily a way of totally hitting my quads because I don't have a, a myriad of machines. So if you don't have, a, uh, if you have a lack of options and you have an inability to necessarily totally isolate that muscle and thus maybe not hit every single fiber a motor neuron, perhaps use numerous sets on the most bang for your buck exercise. It might also be that you don't know what else you wanna do for your legs. So you might think, okay, well, 
hack squats are way better than barbell squats for me personally. So why would I do one set of hack squats and then one set of barbell squats and inferior exercise when I could just do two sets to failure of barbell squats? It doesn't really make any logical sense. So if you have a lack of options or the other options are just generally inferior, then maybe double up. Now, obviously, as I said before, one set can very well be enough. For the longest time, I would train my delts with numerous sets and over time, fuck all gains. I never really progressed my overhead press. I never really grew my delts. Then when I just took it down to one very basic set to absolute balls to the wall failure, my overhead press increased 30 kilos, if not more, and my delts actually grew. Why is that? Well, front delts and side delts and rear delts get inadvertently hit plenty from other exercises. Your front delt gets hit plenty from bench presses. Your side delt gets plenty hit by pull downs or chin ups and so sort do of the rear delts. These exercises will break down those shoulders and thus they don't have as much time to recover unlike a quadricep where you're just simply only training legs once a week unless you're doing like fucking heavy barbell cheat rows where you're using your legs a bunch but even then. So the delts just never really had a time to recover because they're getting so much indirect work and thus by just simply doing one set they were able to recover far better and thus got way better stimulus. Also, before when I was doing volume, I was never taking anything to failure. Whereas now I just put one set of quality work in and I started actually adapting rather than having reps in reserve and a bunch of complicated nonsense, just one set was simply enough. And I think at this point, adding any more sets wouldn't get me any more delt growth because the delt growth has been so insane. So if you are having incredible growth, don't you know, try to fix what's broken. And if you try to do every single body part, three, four, five, six sets to failure, you might start overtraining your central nervous system and your connective tissues and everything in between. So it might be that you only need one set to failure for most exercises or most body parts. And then, you know, the little bit more stubborn body parts, maybe uh, a set to failure and then a bunch of drop sets and then really stubborn body parts like calves in my case, traps in my case, numerous sets to failure, with numerous drop sets, with numerous rest pauses. Spread out these sets rather than doing every single body part to failure, if you can. If you're unbelievably genetically uninclined and every body part is super hard to adapt, uh, yeah, maybe you need to do numerous sets on every single body part. And if you are in that position, you're probably not that strong anyway, and the central nervous system can take all that stimulus. But generally, one set to failure can actually be enough with maybe a force rep or two involved, maybe a drop set here and there, but overall, many body parts can simply just recover or, uh, but in general, most body parts can generally benefit from just doing one set versus numerous sets of flop and pump reps and reserve shit, or even just numerous sets in failure. In the case of my delts, it literally just needs one and anything more would only hinder me. Much like Mike Menser and Dorian Yates always said, sometimes they're right. In other cases, I'm not so sure they're right. Which really leads me to the point that you need to be your own science experiment. You have to train and ascertain what's happening. Am I getting stronger? Am I getting bigger? No? Hmm. Maybe this body part needs more stimulus. Maybe it needs more sets beyond failure. Can I recover from this many sets to failure? If I do three, are my joints hurting? Okay, maybe I'll try two. At two, am I still making gains? Cool. That's the, the sweet spot. At two, am I starting to feel pain? And am I not really getting any more gains than when I was doing one? Well, let me just go back to one or maybe not go up to two or three in the first place because my delts have been growing plenty from one set of mechanical failure and that's it. Do I just need drop sets? My last point is that drop sets, in my opinion, are the king and the best solution to this whole conundrum. Not all the time are drop sets necessarily available. You might not be able to do a drop set on a certain exercise. In the case of my calves, and this kind of goes back into the lack of options, I can't really drop set my calves adequately because ultimately I'm better off just resting 30, 40, 50 seconds doing a bunch of rest pauses or a little shorter rest interval in between numerous sets because to drop set my calves, I have to get off the hack squat machine awkwardly because I'm injured right now, take a plate off, get back on the machine, it takes 30, 40 seconds. It kind of works, but by the time you get back, that drop set's not adequate anymore. You'd be doing way too many reps. Whereas on a cable row, for example, I finish my set, I hit failure, I immediately lean forward for maybe five seconds, change the stack, go straight back into it, and then resume. It's the exact same thing as resting in between sets to failure, if not better, because you get far less rest in between, the pump's better, you're feeling 
it's much easier to focus and go to failure on the initial set. Whereas if you're doing numerous sets of failure, it's harder to then put laser focus over spread out sets. That's why volume is so shitty a lot of the times. Whereas if you just do the one set and then do a bunch of micro sets in that one set, it's much easier just to go, all right, I'm doing one all out set, putting all my focus into that, and then that's it. Rather than monotonously going to failure or maybe not going to failure, resting 60 seconds and then going back into failure. I don't like resting in between sets. It's boring, it's monotonous. It takes a 10 seat away from the workout and makes the workout go for longer. So drop sets, you're gonna get a better pump, you're gonna get way better burn, you're gonna feel the muscle hell a lot more. It's gonna save you time and it's gonna keep you hitting failure a lot easier. So if you feel like your training is not quite enough on certain body parts, or maybe a bunch of different body parts, maybe add drop sets. If you can't add drop sets, maybe do a hell of a lot more rest pauses, or force reps if you have a partner, or do two, three, maybe four sets, depending on the body part. And that's just my two cents on how many sets we need to failure. We might, you might find that you get far better gains just doing a little bit more beyond failure than what you're currently doing. Because as the great Dorian Yates does say, if you've been training for three, six months and you are in a calorie surplus, that's my own little addition to it because he doesn't take that in consideration. If you're doing something for three to six months and you are in a calorie surplus and your sleep's on point, everything else is on point and you're not making gains, you're doing something wrong. And in your case, it very well might be that you're not quite doing enough because you aren't Dorian Yates or Mike Mensa or some dude on steroids. And anyway, that's it for today. Uh, hopefully that's informative. Bye-bye.